I answer questions that subscribers put in the comments below, so please, if you wouldn't mind, leave a question in the comment if you have one, that way I can answer it as a video to help you and everyone else. Subscriber Alexander Starbuck, here you go. And the reply, Jake LOL 1980. Uh, any tips on choosing a bag for average minus 5 degrees C to minus 13 degrees C, which is 23 degrees Fahrenheit to 8 degrees Fahrenheit? Is it better to go for the minus 13 degrees C, like the Kodiak, or get the Alpine and push it with proper clothing, clothing proper four season tent, water bottle, etc.? Cheers! Alexander Starbuck, I can speak from hard one experience. And I'll tell you the truth. Okay, this is my five degree antelope bag from Western Mountaineering. And I've used this in Greenland where uh, it was October, early October. And I talk about that in my book if you want to read the experience of doing that. And it got to minus 20. Now, I was in huts, I was in tents. The weather wasn't super windy, it was stable, it was on the tundra. I was okay, but boy, several nights I was cold. So minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, or whatever that is in Celsius, in this bag that's meant for five degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that was chilly, I probably wouldn't do that again. Next experience when I was camping in Wyoming, the forecast called for no more than 10 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe five, so minus 13, minus, 15 degrees Celsius and I thought okay fine. I'll bring this bag. I'll push it a little bit I'll wear the extra clothing and everything <laughs> What a mistake That night the storm system that was predicted moved in and instead of staying where it was supposed to stay Supposed to stay it blew out for whatever reason and then temperature plummeted to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit so uh, like probably I don't even know in Celsius that's really really cold and I was and now I was camping in my tarp the wind had picked up because the storm system moved out I was cold now I wasn't chattering but I was like whoo boy this is really really chilly and in the morning the temperature pushed to minus 25 degrees my toes were cold like non-stop cold all night that is the last time that I didn't bring my down booties. Now I always bring my down booties. They're simply in my sleeping bag wherever I go. That was a mistake, I would never do that again. So if you think, okay, that the lowest temperature is minus 13 degrees C, don't get the minus 13 degrees C bag because if the conditions clear out and the temperature drops another 10 degrees, you're gonna be pretty cold and you're not gonna sleep well. So I do not recommend if the temperature is whatever it is, you get the bag to whatever it is. One, because you're right on the edge, and these are really good, but oh my gosh. Uh, another experience, hard one experience, I was camping in the Sierras with my Mega Light bag from Western Mountaineering. It's rated to, I think, minus, or, or not minus, it's rated to 30 degrees, 25 degrees Fahrenheit, so about roughly minus five to zero degrees Celsius. And again, the temperature plummeted to five degrees Fahrenheit or minus 14 degrees Celsius. Whoo, boy, that was a chilly, chilly night. I, I mean, I laid there most of the night like, whew, don't move, don't move. I would wriggle, the cold air would come in because my Megalite is in a expedition bag. It doesn't have neck baffles and all that. And again, that was a very cold experience. I would not go camping in the winter in my megalite even if the forecast says whatever it says <laughs> yeah i froze that night too and the time that i froze in wyoming my toes went numb and they stayed numb for a month that's uh, the first level of frostbite damage i didn't have any cellular damage but the nerve damage oh boy the moment i got home i dunked my feet in a like bucket of warm water as hot as i could stand it but still not damaging Ah! All I could do is yell for an hour. I mean, I went hoarse. It was so painful. And I was home so I could warm up and I was safe so I didn't do any extra damage. We talk about the warming your feet, Dr. Terry Williams and I, and Adventure Expedition 1 and choosing your sleeping bag. So all in all, do not buy the bag that goes right to the edge because when the temperature drops 15 degrees, and the storm moves out and you're laying there 
suffering, don't do it. Please don't do it. I've made that mistake multiple times. You'd think I'd learn, but over 20 years, I get caught a few times. That's just the way it is. So relying on clothes, you can maybe stay warm, but your tootsies without down booties or something will be cold. And that means you also probably didn't bring proper boots for that sort of condition. So when I got out of my tent with this bag and <laughs> I tried to put my boots on my toes, not only were just numb, they went numb to the middle of my foot, which means I'm not just cold toes, but the burning went to the middle of my foot. I was in trouble. That means my blood temperature got to nine degrees Celsius or below, which is where the damage starts to set in. Whew. So I only had my regular boots without any insulation and I ran. It was so bad. I couldn't like my stakes in my tarp were welded to the ground. The ground had frozen solid. I, I couldn't get my stakes out, so I just abandoned them, cut the lines, grabbed my tarp. I didn't even want to untie it. I just cut the lines because my toes were like, oh my gosh. And I stuffed my bag in there, got in my backpack, and just jogged as fast as I could out of there. Oh boy. So lesson learned. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't think you can push it with better clothing a tent, uh, water bottles, get the proper sleeping bag and give yourself at least 10 degrees headroom. I know the bag is more expensive. I know the bag is a bit heavier, but when you're laying there at 2 a.m. freezing and your toes are on fire and you wish you'd done something different, please don't do that. Go for a better sleeping bag. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave comments or questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe.